Production Andrew here just reminding everybody to hit that like and subscribe button and maybe even notification bell It physically hurts me that I have to make this little reminder, but the metrics show that it does work Hey that's the most powerful thing you should do. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. 
count it in the past, I don't either. We'll count it. It looks like it's later. Yeah. Oh, you the same round? Alright, you beautiful sons of bitches, we are at the commentary portion, so... <clears throat> I am still wearing the gimp suit. This is the second uh, training session that we did while up in Chicago at uh, Northern Illinois Combat Club. I am only able to do guard passing. I really want to try to avoid doing any kind of, uh, you know, inversion, any wrestling, um, any guard. I can't do anything on my back right now. Pretty much nothing, okay? And if you see me do anything that looks like it might hurt my back, it probably hurt my fucking back a lot. So, hopefully we get that taken care of in the future. I'm talking to some PTs right now, and they're giving me some advice. So, there's hope. But, uh, as far as the trials are concerned, I'm probably fucked. So, um, let's, on that happy note, jump into the commentary. So, I'm already in headquarters on this one. This is, uh, because Bird started the video a little bit late. I've already got his leg kind of smashed down on this side. I've got my instep. He's reaching for my leg. That's probably going to be an underhook in a second. Hey, look at that right there. <laughs> All right, I already have the underhook. I could grab it, but I think I'm trying to make a point in a lot of these that I'm I'm really working on my my floating pummeling passes because this is what I uh, showed while I was up there. So first thing I do after pinning that leg down, start to circle my top leg on top of his top leg. Okay, and then once I get that, I have a lot of options. Like it's a door opener. I can go through. I can go through this way I can go over the top in a knee slice if I have that underhook I just I can double pummel and drag his leg backwards go top butterfly and then winch wiper off to either side for mount really you just have so many options it's ridiculous okay so that was an easy knee slice okay and then I come in on this guy let's watch and see what I do okay very standard so when I come in, okay, I walk into butterfly hooks all the time, okay, I talk about this all the time, the reason I'm okay doing it is because for him to really use them effectively, he's gonna have to grab my ankle somewhere, and then he's gonna have to like strip a leg through, and try to go to single X or something like that, and uh, anytime someone's grabbing my ankles or grabbing my leg, I can under I can underhook knee slice here, okay, and I can drop into it so much faster than people realize, because the diving knee slice is the best knee slice variation for your entry, okay, so I'm okay walking into that, and I'm, I must have felt his hips collapse at that point a little bit, like they must have felt weak because uh, I didn't even bother really trying to pummel into the inside too much. I'm able to just kind of turn, collapse his hips into a folding pass, and at this point I have a lot of options for how to finish this one too. I have the underhook and I'm on his head, okay? So what that means is I can just come over the top and knee slice or I can actually windshield wiper this foot on top first and that's going to free my right leg up to pummel on top and then I can go around to this side or I can just go over the top. I'm pretty sure I'm just going to go over the top. Yep. So, a lot of options, but the knee slice is still one of the best no-gi finishers out there. Okay. Alright, I talk about this a lot, but anybody that's actually sitting up in no-gi is a lot easier for me to pass, okay? I get easier passing options, and I don't have to put as much work into it, you know, that I have to put onto someone that's on their back. Now, the reason why is this little fucking hand right here. 
okay? If I get my underhook, like if I see an opening for it and I can just kind of punch my hand in, chances are just my underhook pressure alone is not going to keep the underhook. I have to go to your head because just one arm holding an underhook and a guy that's sitting up, you're going to back up, okay? You're going to fling yourself backwards and try to bring your legs in at the same time as you're trying to re-pummel me. And it's space that's going to let you re-pummel me. If I don't give you that space, you don't get that arm back, okay? So that's why I grab the hand, the head right here with my hand. That's not doing the knee slice, okay? Um, part of it is it prevents him from going backwards, and the other part of it is that I can punch my arm extremely deep and get a better underhook. And because I have my underhook already, I'm kind of over top of him, all I have to do is just walk my hips down to the mat. We don't have to do a diving knee slice because I don't have to dive, okay? It's just like a slow, consistent knee slice until my knee's on the mat, and then I go into knee slice finishing mechanics. Remember that the entry and the finish are, they're related, but I consider them separate entities. I don't care what entry I do, I'll probably do the same variations on every finish, unless something weird happens. So like there, I'm able to shoulder pressure. I didn't feel like he had a tight quarter guard, so I'm able to just kick it off. I didn't have to do any of my higher level stuff. Here, right into... I don't even know what the fuck the plan was there. Hold on. What was I thinking? I think I was thinking about... Okay, I'm looking at this arm right now. This arm is tempting my... Uh, my flying submission reflex. <laughs> okay, I don't have a strong one of those for the most part, but actually the rolling Kimura from here is fantastic, okay? So I go, I think, initially for it, and then I think halfway through I kind of realize I don't need to do it, and I actually just backstep out. And somehow he catches my leg, which is odd. I'm not fucking sure exactly what happened there. I'd have to watch that a lot of times. But because I get that underhook, it ends up not mattering. So essentially I ended up diving closer to the underhook and then using that underhook to turn it back into a knee slice. you think I would know exactly what I was thinking, but that was just weird on my part. <laughs> I come back in cover, and you see him walking towards both butterfly hooks right there. He's giving me that ankle grip. He's on his side right now, so what I could do is I could drop in and body lock him. The fact that his hips are turned this direction means I could collapse his hips into a leg weave. Uh, really, I have a lot of options. This is an underhook. This is a potential coming around his back and hooking his wrist right there. Uh, body lock potential right here, walking around to the outside. It's really just open season. Okay, so I do a combination of uh, walking him into almost like a leg weave, you know, getting his hips turned with my hips, and then I kind of out windshield wiper him here. And because I'm already on the outside, I have that outside hip exposure, I'm able to just back step around, okay? Yep. Okay, things are getting fucky. <laughs> All right, um, that was like really good and really bad. Right, actually, I'm gonna let it play out because I know thing, I know how this one goes. It gets fucky fast, and this is why high level leg pummeling is very important for no gi. It can get you out of bad situations, and it can just make your life so much easier. And you can really just kind of dominate people passing wise if you have a good leg pummeling and knee slice leg weave system. Okay, let's go back because what in the fuck? All right, so I come in. All right, he's down on this side now, so now I'm on my bad side, okay? I'm pretty ambidextrous with my passing, but I do favor, for the most part, trying to put people in one way or the other. Like, I like to knee slice more of my right arm than I do with my left. I can do both, but I'm better at one side than the other, okay? And here, I go to windshield wiper in again. It didn't quite work out. I think I think I was going to try to go for something aggressive. I think I just want to get over top of him and pummel in this situation, because like I said, I'm trying to... I'm trying to work on my leg pummeling, and I'm also trying to demonstrate to everyone that's in the room who I just taught leg pummeling that you can do it too, and this is what it looks like, okay? So at this point, you can see I'm putting my hands on the mat, and things just get kind of weird, okay? Like, I end up getting kind of turned here, because I think I'm getting ready to actually back step around to this side, and instead, I kind of fuck it up, okay? He gets his hand on my hips. I just shouldn't end up turned like this. This is a mistake on my part, okay? I just didn't control the situation well enough. Now I'm almost in single X. And at this point, I am floating now. You can see my only point of contact is this hand on the mat. Both legs are off the mat, okay? And my goal right now is to not end up in single X because that's reap potential and that's leg lock potential, and those are scary because they are effective. So I do a good job right here doing a crazy high back step windshield wiper mechanic to get this foot back on the inside of this leg, okay? This knee being where it is is not actually great for me because I want to go into a leg drag off of this. Um, so I move it myself, but now my left arm is not quite in the right position, okay? I'd rather my left arm be on, like, like my left hand be like this instead of this in that same area, okay? So when I fall down to the side, you can see I did clear my legs and get into a leg drag position. He makes a huge mistake by trying to sit up and get away from me, 
Okay, because that, I have, a, like, my hand around his body at this point. I'll be able to pull myself up with him. Okay. Now, I screw this up a little bit, because I can put in either hook right now. Okay, if this hook comes in first, that is now my bottom hook. If this one comes in first, I'll be putting the top hook in. And with the momentum of, of me jumping across, I should be able to roll him to where that is now the bottom hook. And you can see, I don't get either hook. And look at my disappointing ugly ass face right there okay i messed up i did not get either hook when i had the opportunity but i did get to a back seatbelt position so now i have more opportunities to keep chasing okay he's doing actually a pretty good job fighting my hooks there i'm able to put my top hook in oh shit um anyone that tells you you absolutely need to put the bottom hook in is just doing you a disservice it's not quite true i want to end up with my top or my bottom hook okay but i don't need to put it in first because i can use a top hook and then adjust around that and make it the bottom hook so you can see that's what I do. Um, as soon as I get that top hook in and I realize I've, I've kind of created a weird situation, you see I bring my knee up higher and this is something I talk about in Nogi back control when I'm talking about how to regain on someone's back when they do start to get away. Chasing the back is about high angles, okay? And these, like when I slide my knee up right this way, this foot and this heel is kind of clamping down and you can see I'm already starting to pull him across to the other side, but it doesn't quite work out. He actually peels my foot off, so I'm able to pull myself back up on top of him when he turns back into a turtle, and I put in both hooks actually at this time, but I get the rear naked choke during the transition, so I don't really give a fuck about hooks at that point, because it turns out you don't need them to finish a choke. A choke is a choke, and it will put you unconscious, okay? That was your standard definition of step in, no geese, to always step into the same side, opening their hips up a little bit. You see I give it a little extra push this way, it's to make sure he can't actually go De La Hiva. I want him on this side. I don't want to fight reverse De La Hiva. I want him to think he's going to get to play De La Hiva so he'll grab my ankle, which is the first thing he did. You see that? He went from my leg to my ankle. Now I know there's an underhook permanently available, and there's nothing he can really do to clear that. Okay, so I'm able to just do a standard Wilson knee slice. Okay, a good diving knee slice. Yep. These guys were in the middle for uh, six minutes during their rounds. Actually, this might have been four minutes. I remember we made it a little bit easier because people were getting really exhausted. Uh, my round was six minutes, so you can see that's why I'm covering people over and over again, okay? All right, right away we come in, we pin them down. I put my hands on the mat, which means I want to focus more on my leg pummeling, and the first thing I do is start pummeling my, uh, my outside leg up on top of his foot, okay? Now that it's up on top of his foot, I have control, and you see my knee line is actually pushing his hip across, and I'm collapsing that. Now if I get my foot anywhere around the outside, he's screwed, okay? I change directions mid-pummel because he overcorrects to follow me. And now I'm able to just kind of walk around his guard, and he could have fought trying to get up a little bit more, but I had him pretty solidified. I didn't have an underhook to keep him down as well as I would have liked, but he didn't really contest it too much. Now, see, I should actually just knee slice this guy right now, I think. I don't think there's any... Uh, I don't necessarily need to put him down in quarter guard if he's going to give me the underhook on this side. I just have a preference for which side I want to do the knee slice on and for what I'm actually trying to go for in these rounds, which is mostly my leg pummeling. So this is not perfect play. I really should take that opportunity. Um, instead, oh, well, I mean, I, I guess I do end up taking it. I do get down first. I didn't have to get down. Once I have that underhook and I'm down, I wish I could see what I was doing more. But it's really just leg pummel, leg pummel, leg pummel. And if at any point during the leg pummeling, I feel like I can get around him and just kind of cut through the bullshit and turn it into like a knee slice, you will, and I will. Okay, so you can see it. What I was trying to do right there was actually um, we circle my top leg that goes on top of his leg and kind of flick his leg to the outside so then I could get underneath his hips. And then I can shelf that side and I can start to walk it up and I'll be able to windshield wiper through. Um, kind of similarly how I did it, but it would have been a lot better and a lot cleaner. You see, I have to come back in and finish that with the knee size mechanics, and I didn't really want to do that. That wasn't what I was going for. What? Bird left this in. <laughs> what the fuck was Bird's editing when he sent this to me? <laughs> okay. So this, this guy is actually crazy tough, by the way. This, this uh, small-looking... I don't, I don't even think he's a kid, um, but he's tough. I watched him do a lot of cool shit to everyone else. And don't use me rolling with people as a metric for how good someone is, because uh, I've talked about this before, but really, really high-level jiu-jitsu athletes, like world-class athletes, will make you look like you don't know what you're doing. And it's just not fair to uh, judge people based on their roles with me or Bird or some or like Couch. or It's like 
judging someone ba for rolling with Leandro low and losing. It's just not really the correct way to measure their skill. Okay, but I, I put him in headquarters right away. He gives up an underhook, and I do a combination of a backstep, pivot, and knee slice to uh, finish in. Fucking gimp suit, man. All right, right away. I come into headquarters. Okay, he actually had shin or shin guard, so I didn't actually uh, out windshield wiper this yet. But I'm already kind of getting my underhook on the left side, so it doesn't really matter because my right foot can now kind of post everywhere because I have so much pressure on my knee preventing his hips from turning into me and opening up. Okay, and it's like the more he kind of pushes into me, um, the easier it is for me to just kind of slide my way through over the top on the over the top knee slice. Now, I, I think there's a chance he could try to get his hand out of uh, the position that it's in right now by circling it under. Um, I'm not as attached to it as I would like, but I do have a lot of pressure with just this kind of grip. Okay. Yeah, things got fucky. Let's go back. What happened? I'm gonna let it play and then I'll go back. Alright, yeah, we're going back to that. What did I fuck up to make that happen? Okay, I let him get a knee shield in here, which I really shouldn't have done. Okay, and... I'm having to kind of force my way in in a way that I don't particularly like. Okay. So I see an opening where he's turning into me at some point. Yeah, because he does actually, he does get his hand back in. Like I said, could happen. He does get it in. Okay. So now instead, you can see I take my hand and I switch it to a Darce. All right. And the Darce is uh, one of my favorite ways to finish passes, Nogi. Even though I'm not probably ever going to finish the Darce itself, I think it's a fi the Darces and guillotines and front headlocks are just another form of upper body control in, in the same way that an underhook is, or even my overhook sometimes will give me enough pressure to pull myself in and finish a pass. So if I ever get a Darce, it's just a matter of walking in my way around while I out windshield wiper him. I don't do a great enough job keeping him down, which is why I actually lead with this knee first, because he's going to have to turn into me at some point. And you can see, once I get behind him, like I do really careful transitions when I get behind people in front headlocks for the most part, I'm able to start hooking his top leg and pulling my bottom leg into the hook itself. And then he sits up off the mat and gives me plenty of space, and I'm able to put both hooks in. That actually hurt my back to do, by the way. I was not happy about that. All right, I'm going to be honest with you guys here. I did not plan that. <laughs> that was not what I went out there and intended to happen. Um, uh, you know, because in training, I, I kind of made it a little bit clear that I have no intention of wrestling. I'm wearing the gimp suit for a reason. And I was kind of just expecting everyone to be on the same page a little bit, where it's like if you're doing a guard passing round, you were trying to work on your guard a little bit. Um, I am giving them lots of openings. I don't begrudge someone taking those, though. I shouldn't be standing up like this. Okay, I'm just doing this out of necessity because of this fucking thing, okay? Then this spine right here. So what I should be down, is, if I think anyone has a chance of trying to wrestle forward on me, I need to come down and, and just kind of match your head level a little bit, almost like wrestling, you know? And then I can just kind of stalk at you, or I can do a lot of different things to put you on your back and nullify your ability to just wrestle forward. Then I'm passing your guard, okay? So we're playing a different match entirely right now. He's thinking I'm wrestling, and I'm thinking I'm passing, okay? So he gets on a single leg right away, and I have a moment of that. It was not what I intended to happen. Here, I feel pretty good because I right away I got him down below my knee line and I, I'm particularly good at just feeling out the openings of someone's arms like there's always usually a little angle that is optimal to retract your leg out and that's what I'm looking for here um, and it fails by the way that was not the fucking plan okay I do it pretty hard but my foot actually stays caught and I am now committed to going backwards okay because I was going to jump over top of him backwards and try to put my hooks in and this falling into the arm bar was just my body on autopilot because I've drilled everything so much that I'm able to recognize patterns and my body will just kind of do things. And that was one of those situations. I did not plan that. I kind of landed in that arm bar and I already had it and I was like, nice. <laughs> you know, it wasn't the plan. All right. Let me come back into cover right away. I made sure I got the instep. I made sure I got his hip. Look at his the, the collapse on his hips right there. I'm not sure if I'm going to go around behind him or if I'm going to go over the top or if I'm going to windshield wiper or come down and sprawl into a leg weave because I could really kind of do either. Okay, so I put a little extra sprawl into the leg weave. 
And right away, I didn't have to go full leg weave, by the way, because he's not opening his knees into me hard enough that I need extra penetration to collapse his frames. Okay, that's the difference between me going into uh, this sprawling position versus me penetrating fully, is always going to be what you make me do, and I'm going to take the easiest route that's the most effective. And it would just be a waste of energy and a waste of motion for me to go all the way through his legs and penetrate at this point when uh, I know I can collapse his hips and I can use my hip to keep his hips down, and as long as I keep this knee his leg right here, his kneecap turned away from me a little bit, all he can do is actually just straighten his leg. He can't turn it back into me and open up and get me back in a guard. So the first thing I started doing is taking my foot over the top, and I can now start to pin something. And you see, as soon as I got something pinned, which is his top leg right now, which is great, I start to work on getting my bottom leg free. And now my bottom leg comes over the top. All I have to do is make sure I just clear his foot which you can see he tried to follow me with a butterfly hook, so I'm putting a little bit of extra work into making sure that won't track me. I think he's actually got a pretty good butterfly hook right there, so good for him. Uh, my upper body-wise, I don't quite have an underhook, but I'm underneath his body enough that it doesn't matter. Okay, so you can see my little toes are kind of wiggling towards his bottom leg now in order to give it some kind of block. So now when I do that motion again, he won't be able to track me as well, and I'll probably be able to just clear the butterfly hook. Yep. And then once I get past him, you can see I, I'm able to just freely let up all of my pressure here. Because it doesn't matter. All he can do is open back up into me, but by opening back up into me, I can bring my knee into a leg drag position, or I can just keep circling with the pressure to full side control. Okay. Generally, I advocate doing that a little bit cleaner, but it, it just depends on the skill level of my opponent on whether or not I want to put that much effort into finishing it. Okay. Now I'm, I'm starting to just expect these guys to just sit up and wrestle at me at this point. So you can see when I come down, he tries to just sit up and grab both my legs. Easy double underhooks, okay? And then when he tries to get up, I'm just making sure I keep him turned down. It's just kind of the standard cow catcher stuff. My upper body is so much higher than his. And let's be honest, I am fucking significantly bigger than him, even though I am now skinny Andrew for the most part. So I just turned him down, and since my knee was in a good spot, it would have been a knee slice even if he got quarter guard. <laughs> all right so now i am in the middle right now okay um everyone else um i think is doing guard retention rounds still in the middle even though i do make them come back and go on top like i'm doing right now for their being in the middle of shark tank rounds okay and I'm just asking everyone, um, when you come in, you just have to play guard. I can't go on my back. If I could, I would be doing the same exact thing that they're doing, okay? All right, this I like to talk. I actually don't get to talk about this a lot. Um, and I'm going to talk about it today, okay? And I'm going to talk about where it came from, too, because... Uh, I know there's like a lot of controversy behind the figure, but man, he really has done a lot for the sport in terms of advancing effective nogi. Okay, so when I came in on this one, first thing I did was slap hands because that's just polite. Okay, I could have actually looked for this underhook here, and I was coming down to put him in headquarters in this position, and I don't know exactly what happened, but I got a little off balance at that point. Okay, and I had to come back in and pivot back into him and start resetting and, and fixing whatever the fuck just happened. He wants to play on a side I don't want him to play on. I want him to play on the other side. So I'm kind of trying to force him on that direction. Now, this is significantly easier to do than people realize. And it's one of the reasons why I'm so uh, lackadaisical about my noogie passing. It's like these openings are fucking everywhere and you can really uh, just kind of technically run through people if you're aware of them. Okay, right here, he grabs my leg, but he has absolutely nothing connecting him to me right now okay like other than this little grip this hand's doing nothing this the, both of these legs are doing nothing and I have a grip on his uh his top leg ankle right now so all I have to do is turn my knee so that my knee is now blocking the retraction of the bottom leg okay so now he can't just bring his knees back to his chest what's the next thing he's going to try to do he's going to try to kick that other leg up and over and try to put me in the matrix but I already have that leg pinned out and that's why it's important you develop a very strong ankle grip game, okay? Even if you're not going to be a Toriano throwing their legs around Nogi, it's like situations like this, they're incredibly important, okay? Now that I'm past him, 
what I would normally be doing is sliding down, bringing my right knee down to the mat. I don't care that he's grabbing it there. He won't have enough pressure if I put all of my weight on the point of my knee and start to turn it down towards his hips. And then I would be kind of closing this space off, kind of getting my bottom knee underneath his hips, and then I would hand weave to finish this normally. Um, I can't really do that right now because of the gimp suit, okay? So I'm thinking, how is the best way to get down from this position? And while I'm doing that, you see I'm keeping this controlled so he never gets a chance to come back up. I thought I could maybe kind of walk around to the other side, but then he starts to turn into me a little more than I like. So right about there. And instead, I just make sure I stay behind his shoulders with my knees. Not just my legs, but it's important that you guys understand my knees stay behind his shoulder, because that's where most of my power is going to be, and to prevent him from turning back into me. Walking into the butterfly guard. Okay, that was actually... I'm going to let this play out, and we're going to talk about that, because that was interesting. Oh, um... Actually, just to pause this real quick and talk about what I was talking about with the leg pummels and stuff. And uh, Gordon Ryan is the guy that I originally got a lot of my newer passing ideas from. Okay, stuff like this position, how easy it is to just back step and walk through people as long as you use your knees and your hand together to block this bottom leg. I got that from Gordon Ryan. Okay, headquarters being as effective a system as it is, okay? I was already leaning that direction a little bit from having run into issues trying to knee slice Dante occasionally from De La Hiva because Dante's underhook awareness is really, really, really good. You have to fucking catch him off guard with your underhook knee slices, you know? Which, it's it's possible, but he was aware. I was I was uh, used to going against some guys that aren't <laughs> black belt world champions a little bit, and I was taking for granted that they were going to grab my ankle in De La Hiva, which Dante would do. Okay, and then I was telegraphing what I was going to do too much, so as soon as I telegraphed it, Dante would let go. Okay, and I'm like, alright, how do I still play this position effectively? And then I started looking for resources while I tried to figure it out, and then I came across Gordon Ryan. I started watching Gordon Ryan's Nogi stuff, okay? And that's what got me looking in that direction, and it became a staple of my already existing uh, Nogi passing game, and I was able to organically take inspiration from him and from the things he does and incorporate it into my own game, okay? So... Think of him however you want. The guy has done a lot for the sport, technically, as far as I'm concerned. Because before that, no one gave a shit about what was optimal for Nogi. Everyone just tried to treat it like it was the Gi. And Gordon Ryan doesn't know what a Gi is, you know, so he doesn't have that uh, mental filter already going through his head, you know. Now here, this, I'm going to talk about this after this plays through again, too. Okay. So, I don't know why it happened. Um, I'm coming in hand fighting him. I'm okay. I'm looking for my setup to windshield wiper or for him to grab my legs and knee slice or me to pummel in and put him into headquarters, whatever it is. And I'm just kind of leaving my arms dangling a little bit. Like here I start thinking about pummeling in and he actually switches and starts to fucking arm drag me. And I was not completely ready for that. It actually caught me off guard. You can see I do go past him here. And this is a fucking horrible thing for me because he gets the chance to wrestle up on me from behind my hips now. He's actually behind me. This is dangerous, okay? And I don't have any way to turn back into him because my arm is past him. It's still blocked. You can see this right here. But on instinct, because this is something I've drilled the fuck out of, I made sure that my leg steps back over to the saddle, okay? Or everyone calls it the saddle, but that's not how I originally learned the position. I learned how to play this position from watching Marcelo Garcia, how he passes, and it became a staple of my passing system, Gi and no Gi. Okay, I didn't give a shit about leg locks. I still kind of don't give a shit about leg locks. I just want to be aware of them and I'll focus on them later. Okay, but from this position, there's a lot you can do in order to finish passes. It's something you can do from a lot of places too. This is how, uh, if you actually do start to successfully burn bolo me, I dive through to this. Okay, and then I pin you down and start to work my leg free and do all of the nuance behind this position. You can see I'm clearing his legs right now. And then I turn back into him, get my underhooks, and then I'm able to just windshield wiper out. So, fun times. It is hard to break habits, okay? Sometimes it takes me a knee sliced a hundred times before you just realize you can't freely grab legs anymore in the nogi. It's just not safe without having your backups ready to offset the head or being able to bring your leg in and lasso me when I go for the underhook until, and you know, once I'm too close, you can't, or being able to let go and re me before I get down, okay? But the diving knee slice happens extremely quickly and the second my little fingers can touch something, I am pulling and now you are fucked, okay? So, that's just standard knee slice because they grab my leg 101.
This is gonna be a long video. All right, he tries to sit into me, and this is funny. I'm gonna finish this, and I'm gonna talk about that. Okay, there is a lot of bad information out in the jiu-jitsu scene, by the way. People that have never taken the time to go and roll with someone at a world-class level or don't bother going and cross-training or competing or whatever it has. People just get this bullshit in their head, like, some things are this easy to defend, just do this, or, um, like, one of the things people say is like, oh, you wouldn't be able to knee slice me, I'll just go deep half on you. No, motherfucker, <laughs> you won't, okay? It's like that underhook. Okay, he sits forward to try to grab me here. He tries to grab my leg. You see I'm automatically pummeling for the, the underhook on the right side. And I'm already grabbing the back of his head so he can't run away. Now here. I'm already turning my knee down. I'm confident in my underhook's secureness now. He tries to go deep half. And he even has a shin hook, I think. It just doesn't matter. Once I put all the weight on my knee and I use this underhook to prevent him from going and turning his whole upper body to the other side, he's just dead. He's just in a knee slice. It doesn't matter that he has the shin hook. It doesn't matter that he's under my knee. I'm just going to finish it like those things aren't even factors, okay? It makes no difference to me. If I had been slower or if I had a little bit less pressure and he was able to pull me in the deep half, I would still probably use that underhook to pull him back to the other side and then I would finish a knee slice on that guy. Okay, it's uh, I have to make a lot of mistakes or I have to be really caught off guard in order for that to even have a chance of working. So, no, it is not an effective counter to the knee slice to try to just go deep half. You will actually just end up leaving your legs open and I'll just get an easier finish for the most part. You see, I don't have to do a lot of my technical finishes for the most part on the knee slice, Nogi, because people just don't do a good job for the most part of uh, clamping the way that they're supposed to. So it's like, as soon as my knee's down on the mat, I am happy, we are good to go. I did not have control of the music on uh, this session, by the way. I had it in the morning, and that's why you heard some anime shit. Um, all right, again, somebody tried to go play Daily Heave on me, and then I just get to do a really easy technical knee slice. And now I'm taking my time, finishing a little bit. It only took a minimum amount of shoulder pressure because I was able to get a good angle on it, and I have a lot of uh, authority behind. Ooh, bird's getting peppy. Okay, he's not gonna cut. He knows I'm injured, guys. He's not gonna come at me at 100%. So this is almost like a pointless roll. Bird made. Uh, he did make the tat. The uh, and it, okay. So if me and Bird were rolling for real, this is not how this would have fucking gone. By the way, Bird wouldn't just grab my leg like that and then lean backwards passively. If Bird touches me, Bird knows he has to offset my weight in some direction instantly in order to not just get immediately fucked. Okay, so our rolls are usually extremely fast paced because both of us know what the other person is trying to do as a general rule, okay? And both of us know the importance of each step of the chain, whereas most people don't, okay? It's like, which grips are important for what? Uh, who gets it first gets to dictate the pace. We are both intrinsically aware of that fact. And, you know, when we roll with other people, especially like non-competitors, it's almost like we're just doing a different sport in terms of like what they are just completely oblivious about what's happening. Okay, so Bird is not actually coming after me here. So like he wouldn't have gone flat like that. He would have been pulling me in a single X as hard as possible. I did hit a very good timing on that knee slice to catch him off guard, but he just wasn't trying like he would have normally been. All right, that, that went good and then bad. So, right here, okay. I'm able to clear this, but I'm not able to get all the way down. I let him retract that other leg too much, and now I'm in an awkward situation where a decent wrestler is wrestling up on me. Remember, guys, this guy actually wrestled. I'm pretty positive, they told me at least. So, he's tough. And thankfully, he was a gentleman and went back down, but he did get out of the pass. Okay, so that was fair. Now I'm coming in. What is happening? All right, like, I don't want to be doing this. This is hurting my back to do, but... Okay, so what the fuck happened in this? That got weird. Okay. So right there, I saw an opportunity to try to backstep, and I did a poor job of managing this. You can see I'm actually still trying to follow through up on this a little bit by grabbing his knee and pushing it through, but things just didn't go according to plan. Okay, I... Th I don't know why I stepped this one up. I think he grabbed it, and then there was a delay in my head of, oh, shit, I better kick out of this. But then he's on this grip, actually, so it's kind of like the same way I set up uh, fake arm drags on guys. I, I, when I slap their hand, or their elbow... 
I know they're going to drag back. It, it might be delayed, but anyone that wrestled and anyone that has any reaction timing whatsoever, if you slap the back of their elbow like you're going to arm drag it, everyone pulls back, okay? And that's what I'm looking for. So I think he got me with that. Okay, he grabbed my ankle, and then I step back, and he starts coming up, which I wasn't ready for, and I think I do get an underhook on one side, but I don't get enough over top of him to just turn him back down. And if this was a real match, like right here, I'd be pulling down on his head, and then I would pop him up, and I would blast through and double-leg him, but that is not fucking happening today. No, sir. So we come back in. Okay, get him down on his back. I don't like that I don't have his hip pin the way I would prefer, and I'm coming in the middle, which is not usually what I want to do, because he can decide which way to turn, okay? Not a fan of this, at least in no game. I think I actually just kind of X-pass him and let him turn into me, and because I'm able to come through and grab the back of his head with my left arm, I know I can kind of clear back to the other side. He went into a turtle, I follow him into the turtle, and I just put my hooks in. Well, that's boring. Those all happen because of a, uh, just this cascade of mistakes on my part from being lazy or not hitting my correct timing or being injured. It doesn't matter what the reason is. That was not what I was looking for. That was decently clean, though. You know, again, anyone that sits up, grabs my leg like he thought he was going to go through to single X, but the problem is, like, when he goes to strip this leg through, I'm just going to start to cut across his hips and do an over-the-top knee slice. And it's just a position people don't really realize it can happen from. Um, the reason we fall down like this is, like, I'm starting to collapse his hips at this point with my knee, okay? And I think the reason why that's happening, too, is because he is actually grabbing my leg pretty hard, so they're all kind of connected together, okay? And when that starts to go down, I think he's pushing his legs away from me this way. Okay, like pushing his legs down towards my feet. And I know if I just windshield wiper over the top of those, you can see his leg actually goes past me when I windshield wiper, so I'm pretty positive that's what's happening. He loaded up the pressure, and then when I moved my leg, it was spring-loaded past me. Okay, and then I'm able to start to walk around to the back side and get my knee slice right there. Yeah, I just had to explain. I, he needs to go down. I can't wrestle. I can't be on bottom. It's just, it's it's this or I don't train at all, you know. Oh, things get real fucky here. Um, stop resisting, <laughs> you know. Uh, I just kind of walk myself to mount, and I'm thinking maybe I'll just tap him with this, but I also kind of don't want to put any real pressure on that because it's just kind of mean. Um, things just got fucking weird there. Um, that will probably never happen again in that exact same way. Okay, right away down into a decent headquarters. Okay, I'm leaning a little bit, which is fine. He's not really fighting me for this lift. Guys, remember when they underhook me? That is actually good for me because they attach me to their chest, and now I can freely focus on floating leg pummeling. Okay, the only real issues you ever run into in situations like this, or like when you're down over top of people, is people trying to offset your weight over top of them and push you away. Okay, and that's just the opposite of them hugging me. Okay, when they hug me, you can see I'm okay just bringing that foot back into play over the top. And I actually am taking this across, and I'm thinking about going reverse body lock right now. You can see how I was blocking his hips. And that's just a way for me to freely jump over the top and start to walk around him. In fact, I'll even go back and uh, point that out again. He is giving me a lot of trouble. But you can see I was actually gritting my fucking teeth because that was how much it was hurting my spine to do that. Okay, so... From the point that he attaches to me, I'm just thinking about so many different options. Which one do I really want to go for? But I just see that I, he's got a lot of separation between his elbow and his hip. Okay, and what that means, you can see that I should switch my, which hand's on the mat, where my frame is, okay? So now my weight's on my elbow, and that freed up this hand to start coming across. And when I come across, I put it right on the mat next to his hip. Okay, now that it's on the mat next to his hip, I know he can't actually follow me with his legs anymore. Okay, especially because I'm on top of this butterfly hook to begin with. I can now freely kick up and over and around. And he's got to turn into me at that point. Okay, and it takes a little bit of windshield wipering. He's grabbing my leg and it's slowing me down. It just doesn't matter because my arm is still blocking him there. He has to turn into me. And all I have to do is make sure I get my left knee behind him. Okay, he turns up into a turtle. I'm okay with this. I like back chasing to begin with. Um, this chase takes way more fucking work than it needed to because that was fucking painful and I didn't want to do that. Look at him. That is the face. That is the cost of victory, motherfucker. Toughen up. It's just a spine. Right into headquarters. 
collapse the hips. Now it's leg pummeling time. Um, I didn't actually bother pummeling there for the most part. I was able to just kind of backstep, and I just think that was because of the pressure that I had. Like, I, I knew intrinsically he wouldn't be able to follow me with those hooks and open back up into me. When you guys know the rules behind all of the passing stuff, the hard rules and the soft rules, you can break the rules. You just have to know when and why. Okay, so it's, un it's important to have a high-level understanding of the techniques you do have. Hmm. Okay. So that was really passive on my part. Um, really just working on controlling his legs, kind of deciding which pass I want to go for. Okay, and you see I'm doing... Oh, he's underneath my leg here too. And the things I would have to do to pass that aren't really things I would want to do. Okay, things like uh, walking that leg to the outside, coming in, bending down, and really trying to leg drag him and all that. I don't want to do that right now with my back. So I think I just kind of waited there until he abandoned the position. So I just shut it down until he tried to do something else. Now, when I look for this back step, it's because he lets go. Okay. And I have my chest. Look at it. It's on the outside of his knee right now. I have full outside hip exposure, and his knee was curled into him a little bit. So his butterfly hook is not very far away. So if I bring my leg out that direction first, it unhooks it. And then when I go to backstep, he has he can try to follow me all he wants. He's going to run into this immovable brick that is my solar plexus. And I get this outside hip exposure. It actually came into him a little bit first, too, if you notice, to try to get his hip angle to be a little more extreme to make it harder for him to follow me with those butterfly hooks. There we go. And then once I get down to side control, it's just a matter of kind of like pancake scooping him back to where he's flat and I don't have to worry about him wrestling up into me or anything like that. Headquarters. What am I looking for? So I grab the underhook again. Nope. We're just going to pummel. Okay, this is what I was talking about. That was a top pummel, actually. What? Okay, I tried to do this, the flick to the inside, okay? I actually thought I got it at first. So what I'm looking for here is actually to take that foot that's on top of his foot and kind of flick it out, okay? It's something that people will naturally give me for a lot of the time because they're not really sure what's going on in this position. They're trying to use the only attachments they have, which are butterfly hooks to push you away. And it makes sense to them if they don't really like fully understand what's going on, okay? Now, I don't get the flick out, all right? So when I go to flick it out, it doesn't work so I'm able to just kind of bring my leg back and then I slide my knee up and through the middle into the double butterflies on top okay now at this point I can decide which way I want to go um, I can go to mount or I can windshield wiper either side off to side control and I'll usually go to the side that's opposite of any underhook I have okay but when I'm gonna go to mount what I'm gonna look for let me point it out here okay you can see uh, you might not be able to see it, but it's happening. I'm taking my hands and I'm bracing on the mat right now. And that's what's allowing me to have backwards pressure. And that backwards pressure is my butterfly hooks pushing into his floating thighs, up kind of by his hip flexor area over here. And the further I push those down, this you can see I really got a lot of push off those. Once I let those slip off with all of that loaded up pressure, they just slap the mat flat, okay? If I don't do it this way and I don't do it carefully, the problem is whatever foot comes off first, if he's paying attention, he quickly turns and catches the other foot in quarter guard. So you really want both to happen at the same time. And like I said, I like to make sure people's legs are really extended so they can't even get a chance to think about butterfly hooks or quarter guard before I do it. All right, we are wrestling. I do not want that. And again, that keeps happening because I'm just not coming in like I'm supposed to. I'm supposed to be coming in low and wrestling stance and everything I preach all the time. I am just not doing it. All right, so now he's on both legs. He's on the knee and on the ankle and butterfly hooks. He's extending this leg, and this butterfly hook is dead already. Uh, I think I'm digging an underhook over here. I was not. Go back. Why did that happen? Let's analyze this. Okay. The reason it happened... Okay, my, my bottom knee actually gets over top of his knee, and I'm able to do what I was saying earlier, which is put downward pressure with my knee to block his bottom leg. So now I just have to make sure that I can clear this top butterfly hook, and I suspect... I just felt the lack of butterfly pressure on his part, so it wasn't quite a sticky hook, and I'd be able to get even like a millimeter in front of it, which is all I need, okay? Once there's a little bit of space, I'm no longer dealing with a tracking pressure. He has to come back and find it again while it's going away from him, okay? And then once I get to the outside there, 
Um, he does end up turning into me a little bit, but I have a lot of pressure when I sprawl, and I had decent upper body attachments to put him back down. And I think the round actually just ended, and that's why that fi that finished. Otherwise, I would have kept trying to get on his back at that point. And I don't know what's going on quite here. I do go in the middle again for another round of guard passing, but that was pretty smooth. Uh, butterfly hook, when should I bring? He's fighting me a lot in the finish. The finish is done at this point. That would be a pass, but I, I usually go until they stop, you know. So I'm all the way down on this. I'm in a fantastic spot. I even have the underhook. Okay, so watch my foot over here. Right away, it's starting to windshield wiper on top. Now that it's on top, I can turn it down into a knee slice because I have this underhook. Um, you don't have to windshield wiper your foot on top first before you do over the top knee slices. It just makes it a lot safer because they're really genuinely unable to follow you or push you away or uh, do any of the fuckery that would cause you to lose the pass once you get the underhook. So it's just safer. Not always necessary. You're really going to have to go off feel on that one. Alright. It took me a second. I re-pummeled myself to the inside. There is. Every time someone grabs my leg, you are giving me an underhook. So let's go back. A lot happens here right away. So I come in. I put him on his back nice and slow. I'm pinching my knees in to control his butterfly hooks and make sure nothing crazy happens. I start going leg weave. That's what it is. I feel his frames collapse. I start bringing my knee in for a leg weave, and that doesn't work out. Okay, he starts to actually open his leg back up into me, and I'm like, ah, oh, god damn it. It didn't work, so I use that opportunity to circle my uh, foot back to the inside. Now I'm in a good headquarters. Okay, I'm still floating a little awkwardly. I'm not leaning on him as much as I should. I'm really far away. And you see, I go ahead and I make sure that gets back into position. Um, I'm not sure exactly what I'm looking for here. I think I'm just floating around looking for an underhook, and he ends up giving it to me by reaching up for my leg. Okay, and at that point, you know, I'm on top in headquarters with an underhook. I'm coming down into a knee slice, and there's just really not a lot people can do about it. Okay, let's force the... What? <laughs> <laughs> what was that? I remember it happened, and um, I go, I drilled a like windshield wiper over the top and back step as I try to use my knee to really kind of push his hips out of the way, and I just think he actually had enough pressure to block me, and I I don't know how I ended up committing to such a weird spin. I think I thought my knee was going to be in a different position than it was, so that didn't work out. But I do end up past his knees, and uh, again. You know, I used to conceptually think about this a little bit differently. I'm like, oh, they'll just kick up and over. And it wasn't until I really watched a lot of Gordon Ryan, how he keeps controlling the far leg like that, that I realized how effective and safe and easy to do these kind of step through and step around passes are. Because once I get here, as long as I'm good with my knees and good with my control, it's just a matter of working myself down. And whichever way they turn, I can kind of guarantee I'm going to end up on the back of their top shoulder to prevent them from turning back into me. And that's control at that point. You know, it's like you can run away all you want, turn into a turtle. Anyone that's actually thinking they're safe turning into a turtle it's just giving me free back control at that point so okay you know i actually been taking a little bit more time to walk at everyone in a stance on this second round through so like i actually get down a little bit here when i come in all right yeah he's letting me collapse his hips a little i'm probably gonna go over the top of this because i'm just so uh you see i'm actually penetrating my knee this time what am i looking for though there you go. So I'm going to explain this, okay? This is leg weaving 101 type stuff for me um, when it comes to these finishes. I think I just had bad upper body attachments. So I'm, I'm penetrating my knee through. I'm making sure my foot stays behind his other leg. That way there's no chance of him pulling my, my leg through into the saddle and getting his leg lock look like fuckery going, okay? Now, I start looking for upper body attachments at this point, but I'm, I'm kind of floating high, and I think I don't really want to come down because of my back, okay? So that's not great. So I'm thinking also, too, I might be able to get him to reach across, and then I can actually dive into Darts and go over the top. That's why, that's what my body positioning looks like, at least right now. So I think I end up getting some kind of upper or body attachment to the other side, and even if I don't, I think I might feel like my hips are strong enough to start to sprawl. So something I like to do to finish leg weaves is, you know, I love circling this foot that's on the outside on top of his top leg first before I do anything because once I get it on top I can open it a little bit to the limit of his flexibility he can't move it anymore it's stuck it can't turn into me at that point I can walk around for free 
Um, but sometimes it's high and sometimes it's hard to get at. Okay. So what I do is I actually use my hip without compromising my knee and without compromising my back leg that's underneath here. I start to bring his hip into a better or his foot into a better position with my hip. Okay. You can see I did it right there. Now I know exactly where it is and it's in a much easier to access spot for winch wiper mechanics. And now I circle my foot on top. Okay. He tries to lift me away at the same time I do this. And you see, I don't actually end up hooking it exactly how I want, but I am on the outside and I have outside hip exposure at this point. All I have to do is make sure I can clear this butterfly hook. So you can see, I, I push my left knee in as a block as I start to back step. Okay. And I end up clearing the butterfly hook. And now it's just a matter of using my knees to prevent his knees from coming back in as I work my way down. Under hooks, guys. Don't give them up. Okay, I was actually, uh, <laughs> hold on, let me look at that again. I went for something cheeky right there. That, I was going to grab that. <laughs> and I was going to tap him with that. I was going to hit him with the stop resisting. But I got close and he actually got it back. So then I have to go back to boring shoulder pressure and just like a standard knee slice finish. I was going to tap him there, though. Coming in a little bit lower. That right there was the Gordon Ryan walkthrough backstep shit that I've been talking about. It didn't quite work out. He was able to turn back into me a little bit, but then I was able to just take his legs and uh, technically brute force them across. <laughs> All right, standard knee slice. I will say that... Uh, when I'm doing rounds like this, where I'm just kind of passing people like every 10 seconds for six or 10 minutes, I end up trying to look for different types of passes and giving up opportunities and letting things get kind of weird later on. Because like after I've hit 15 knee slices, I don't want to hit another knee slice. I want to do something new and I want to work on something else. Okay. So that is something you can see if you actually watch a lot of my longer um, round types. I don't want to do the same thing over and over. Yeah, that was pretty good. So we walk at him. Okay, you can see I'm already starting to try to circle my foot in. I didn't really care that he had shin hooks or shin guard. My other foot is coming through to push his foot off and then enable me to get my hook to the inside of his knee. Okay, that doesn't work though, I think. He just kind of pushes me away. But I have good body attachments somewhere. I have enough that I know I can start to pull myself in, which is great. Okay, um, I use that to get that underhook. And then as soon as I get it, you can see I'm actually cutting over the top of his hip right there. It's an over-the-top knee slice. And now at this point, I'm just working my way down. He doesn't have anywhere to go. I don't want him to invert. I don't want him to turn into a turtle. I don't want to chase his back. I just want to finish the pass. So I hold it until they know that they've been passed for the, the round type that we're doing. Okay, right away he grabs my foot. Um, he let go this time, so he is, he is learning. Start to circle myself up. Okay, and I'm able to grab this underhook while I do that. Um, it takes a lot of... Ooh, wait, hold on. This is going to be a good one. This is the pass that I was trying to describe to you guys before. Okay, the one that I really love going for from headquarters. I think it's actually one of the, the best finishing passes from headquarters and then the way it just sticks someone's hips to the mat. Okay, so once I circle my foot on top of his top leg... Okay, you can see right there in that little pop that I did, that was me flicking it out and getting my leg under. Okay, so now my knee is about here. Okay, right, right about here, actually, you can see it. And my foot's here, and I walk my foot and my knee up so that I can keep both of his legs separate. Okay, I don't, I, I don't want him to catch half guard right now. Okay, and half guard that he would catch would actually be on this leg. So what I do is... Uh, you can have underhooks for this or you can not have underhooks for this. It doesn't matter. Um, underhooks make everything more effective or a body lock makes it more effective because they reinforce your hip pressure. But all I have to do is take this foot now, right here, and put it where this foot is in a quick windshield wiper replacement motion. And that was it right there. Now I'm already on the outside. The most you can do is catch my knee and I'm able to just kind of walk myself out. So it's one of my favorite passes from there. It's very, very difficult to get away once you actually do get all the way down. Very rarely does anyone ever get away when you do get all the way down. Grabbed my knee and I turned it into a knee slice. I would never have seen that coming. And a little bit of authority behind that kick. Push, sorry, push.
All right, that was kind of some floating knee slice fuckery right there. <laughs> because, like, um, you can see there's a point where I know I'm going to be able to get that knee slice here. And I'm just letting my hips collapse in dead weight to get my chest down closer to that underhook. Because it's really distance from the underhook that's going to matter on top of my underhook pressure. Okay. I feel confident he's not going to catch me there because I have good windshield wiper mechanics. So I just really start to clear my way through. Um, if I got caught in this position, I'm okay floating here. If you guys saw the little video that we put out the other day from our first training session we did in the morning, I'm, I'll float in the air for 30 seconds if I have to. Get the fuck out of here, you douchebag. Um, not him, me. <laughs> I was like, a, I was just making a joke because that was a pretty smooth pass, actually. Um, yeah. I'm just having a good time joking around. Don't take that seriously. I'm very much not full of myself. <laughs> Me and Bird don't buy into our own hype whatsoever. Um, I am definitely not going to go back through this fucking 13 minute video. So, that was fun. We can thank Bird for this little bit of editing right here. Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty positive he has no idea. And again, like I said, we're going to do a different format. This is going to be at the end of the round. Okay, so we're going to put this whole 13 minute roll at the start. You guys can watch it without the commentary. And then come back and watch it with the commentary if you want or just go straight to the commentary with the uh the timestamp shit that bird should hopefully add and if you guys want me to do a similar uh breakdown on one of your guys's matches you know you guys can hop in the patreon or you can hop in the discord and send us a request there should be a link in the description below and if you guys enjoyed the video don't forget to eat your panda express and to have a good day bye have a great time Alright guys, if you've ever wondered how do I manage to pull off some of the ridiculous bullshit that I do, go ahead and check out our instructionals on bgjfanatics.com. We don't hold any information back when we make an instructional. It's everything we actually do. We cover everything from gi and no gi buzzsaw, how to wrestle your way up to victory, how to assert dominance from back control, even to what sweet nothings you should whisper while you're on their back. And don't forget we have what's probably the most successful knee slice system in the world just sitting up there for free. So you should absolutely go check that out. We also have a Patreon account called Wilty Brothers BJJ where you can help me and Bird as we try to take over the world with our non-toxicity. Alright. We currently have five tiers on offer and those tiers offer things from uh, early access to videos to rolling commentaries of your own to perks in the Discord channel if you guys want to jump in. We have like 700 people in there right now. Absolutely should check it out if you just want to get more involved with me and Bird. And don't forget to check out our Instagram at andrewwilty46 for some of those sweet, not quite YouTube friendly content. Currently I'm at about 42,000 subscribers and I think Gordon Ryan has 400,000. So uh, yeah, let's get to work on that. And lastly, don't forget to check out our affiliate channel, Pedago Submission Fighting. They offer some fucking seriously good, high quality production content, almost like the Daisy Fresh documentary you watched on Flow Grappling, okay? Professional editing, lots of heart and soul put into this. If you guys aren't watching that channel already, what the fuck are you doing with your lives? And guys, like always, don't forget to eat your fucking Panda Express.